My next guest says the sell-off is revealing some pockets of value. Joining me is David Bonson. He's the chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. David, welcome. What do you buy today? Well, it's getting to a point where there's quite a bit that one could buy. It's not so sector selective. We'll see if that full capitulation comes. It's interesting to me, Kelly, that energy is still up on the year, uh, even with these last five or six days. And it's further interesting that bond yields are dropping and, in fact, have dropped about 13 basis points in the tenure over the last five days. So this whole narrative that equities are dropping because the Fed's raising rates and the bond yields going higher is completely inaccurate. Hmm. The stocks are dropping because certain parts of the market got way overpriced. So, but would you agree that the catalyst for the correction is the normalization and the Fed's tightening? No, I would not. I think that the fact that the Fed was going to be raising rates this year was known a month ago, three months ago, six months ago, and not just known, really known. Smart money, dumb money, retail, and everybody knew there was going to be some form of tightening, some form of normalization. I actually don't even really agree with the word normalization, although I definitely know what you mean by it, and I agree with that. They're headed towards a place of a more normal path. But I think normalization would have a Fed funds rate much more than where they're going to go. And a normalization of the balance sheet would get us back to $4 trillion. They're not even going to get close to that. So they're going to be tightening on the margins. But no, I think the catalyst here is that valuations got stretched and valuations always have to adjust. It's just we never know when. So what are your conclusions about the Fed from all of that? It sounds like you want them to be more aggressive than what the market is currently even talking about. It, it, I, that's a fair way to put it, but I don't think it's that I want them to be because all I can do with client capital is invest around what I believe will be. And I do not believe the Fed is going to be more aggressive than they're saying. And in fact, I don't believe they're even going to get to four uh, rate hikes this year. I think they'll end up chickening out at around three. Um, but look, the high yield bond spreads as of this morning were only about 290 basis points. Credit is not yet uh, reacting to this sell off. I assume things have widened a bit in the last few hours, but not by much. Uh, 2018 was sort of the level where you saw what happens. Credit spreads blowing out and the Fed responding. We're not even close to that yet. So I think the Fed will do a marginal a uh, reduction of balance sheet through roll off. And I think they'll get about three rate hikes done this year. You also s sort of describe this. It, se it sounds to me like as a healthy, maybe a needed correction, certainly in some parts of the market that had you know run too far. So you said you like energy here. It's still green on the year. What else is interesting to you? Where should people go as this kind of recalibration continues? Well, it's tough for me to answer because I really believe people should go now where they should always be, which is in higher quality. We're not big speculators. And I do think, Kelly, most of what we're seeing right now is speculation getting hammered. And so what we call at our firm shiny object investing, you see crypto down 50% from a very recent high. This is not the stuff stability is made of. So we prefer companies that have stronger balance sheets, and that could be in any sector. We're not anti-technology. I talk on your show a lot about liking old tech companies that have good, dependable earning streams. Some of those FANG names were very expensive. They've come in a lot. Some haven't yet. So it, the primary criticism I have is of the real shiny object stuff that was just purely speculative, way ahead of its skis, and now has gotten slaughtered. We're not, we have no appetite to go into those types of names. We want to focus on quality throughout this year. Yeah. And for us, that means dividend growing names. Quick final word. It's been a rough month for the financials, which should be a big beneficiary. Yeah. You still like JPM. You like Truist. What would you say here about the prospect for financials to perform well and for rates to, I mean, you tell me what you think they're going to do then. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting, the narrative that uh, a wider yield curve and having the long end go higher is supposed to help financials. JP and Truist, more so JP, are down on the month. We would absolutely be buying there. And the two names that have really gotten cheap in financials are not the big banks, but asset managers. Blackstone and Apollo hmm. have gotten very cheap as well. So we really like those uh, financial names, but we would have liked them even apart from the sell-off. Now they've just gotten more appetizing. Very interesting. David, great to have you here today. Thanks for your perspective. Thanks, Kelly. David Bonson with the Bonson Group.